In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Visual Composer slider, also called the carousel, to create sliders of your images. And normally you'd use a different plugin for this, something like Revolution. But if you don't have huge demands for the functionality of that slider, using the one built in the Visual Composer works just fine. I'm going to show you how to use it and how it works right now. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. If it's your first time here, hit subscribe, then hit the bell icon so you don't miss anything. Just out of curiosity, what type of sliders have you guys used in the past? And do you even like sliders? Are they kind of played out, those, those headers or images on the site somewhere that just flip over time? Do you even use those? Do you even look at those? I know I don't that much anymore, but people still seem to want them on their websites. Just curious what you guys think of them. And now let's get in the screen capture to see how to create them with Visual Composer. I'll see you there. To get started with the Visual Composer slider, we clearly have to have a page to put it in. So if you don't have a page you're working on right now, just go to pages and then add new to create a new page to play around with this. I'm going to call this VC slider just to keep it simple and I'm gonna use the front end editor. So I'm gonna click on this button right here. It's gonna make me save changes first. I'm gonna publish this page and then click on front end editor. And some of these tutorials are done in the back end editor, some in the front end so you get to see both. Pick the one you like and use that one consistently. They're both equivalent. It's just the front end is more visual and makes it easier and faster for you to try different things. So we have our header up here, which is part of the theme. Yours will look different. Title of the page. And then this is the content area right here. So I'm going to click on add element here and I'm going to find the image slider, which is under image, image carousel is what they call it in visual composer. It, it does function a little bit differently than a slider. And I'll show you what that means in just a second. We're going to click on image carousel. I'm not going to give it a title. The reason being, if you title the elements right in here, it makes it more difficult to style them with CSS later if you want to do that. So I usually use separate headings instead of titling a widget. I just have the widget do what its purpose is. And this is an image carousel. That's the purpose of this widget. So I'm going to click on images right here. And we're going to have to add some images to our carousel. And I've got some stock photos here. I'm just going to select these five. Just upload all of those. Okay, all our images are uploaded. You can check and uncheck these boxes up here if you want to choose other images or deselect images. I'm going to choose all five of these and then click on the Add Images button in the bottom right. And now we have them all in here. And then we do some settings. So the carousel size, this one is a thumbnail by default. Doesn't look great as a thumbnail. So I'm going to type in large, which is one of the keywords listed down below. You also have the option of defining precise pixel height and width if you want to. There's an on-click action. Open pretty photos of default. None means when they click on it, it won't do anything. We're gonna choose that one for right now. I'm gonna keep the orientation horizontal. Slider speed is in milliseconds. So this is 5,000 milliseconds, which is five seconds. And change that to two for the purpose of this video. Slides per view is how many slides appear on the page at one time. So I'm just gonna choose that as one. It's gonna auto play. And all the rest will stay as it is. Then click on save changes and we see it update live right in the page. And large, still not that large. So I'm just going to actually make this bigger. I'm going to change this to full. See what happens. Save changes. Now we have the images in full and we have the slider going every two seconds or a carousel, I should say. The difference between a slider and a carousel, one of the big ones, is if you click on the navigation buttons at the bottom, a carousel slides through all the intermediary images, whereas a slider just goes directly from the image you're on to the one you're going to. So pay close attention as I click on the very last one, I'm currently on the first one, I click on the last one, it's gonna scroll through the middle ones very quickly. See all that happened? That's a carousel. Versus a slider which would take you right back and forth between the front and back images, or the two images you choose. And there's little arrows on the right. They're hard to see in some of the images just because of the not enough contrast in the colors. If we click on this edit link right here, let's add a little click action to it. So on click, let's open pretty photo. Save that. Now if we click any of these images, it opens pretty photo. 
which is just another image carousel, which is interesting. It, it, it's kind of the duplicate functionality. So if we close this again, go back to the edit, you also have the option of using custom links. So if you click on an image, it opens links. And the way you do this is the first image is the first link here. So we're gonna have this hashtag one to make it map the first link. That's gonna be the one that the first image links to. Hit enter, hashtag two is gonna be the link for the second image. Enter again, hashtag three is gonna be the link for the third image. So that's how you link images. If you, if you wanna skip an image, hit enter twice so there's a blank space. Now you have, this should be five. So we have this link for the first, link for the second, link for the third, no link for the fourth, link for the fifth. So that's how we assign links to images. And you can set same window or new window for when that image is clicked on. Now if we change this slide to preview, it's interesting functionality. I'm gonna take off these links, set that back to none, click on save changes. Now we have two images appear at a time. And when you slide, it slides like this. And we have an uneven number of images, so the last spot is blank. If you have multiple images per view, like I do here, make sure the number of images you have is divisible by the number of, of images per view. So if you have three images per view, you wanna make sure that the number of images you have in your slider is a multiple of three, otherwise you're gonna have blank spaces at the end. Maybe you like the blank spaces, in that case choose whatever image number you want. And some of the other options we have available are actually pretty nifty. Click on this pencil again to access the image carousel settings. I'm gonna switch this back to one slide per view. And I kind of like the partial view. I'm actually gonna turn a bunch of these on at once. So the hide next and previous buttons, which we can barely see anyway, they're like right there, barely visible. Hide that, loop the slider, save changes. Now you can see a partial of the next image before it loads, which I find pretty interesting. So every time you switch images, you see a partial of the next one. Obviously the, this doesn't look quite right because the image heights or the image aspect ratios aren't the same. So some are taller than others in the space available. So you need a specific size of images to make this work properly, but it's a pretty cool or interesting feature. On the one hand, it's interesting, but on the other hand, it looks like it might be broken. If you have someone who's not familiar with it, they might be like, oh, it's broken. It's got half the other image in there. That's weird, but I still kind of like it. So I'm gonna unhide those, take off that partial view, and then we're back to our slider settings. And as you can tell, you can mess around with a lot of settings and not break anything. If things get really bad, you can just go ahead and delete this image carousel. Let's click on the delete button, delete it, and start over. There's nothing to worry about. Just go in here, play around, and just experiment and learn how this stuff works. As you know, Visual Composer is a premium plugin which you can buy from codecanning.net. If you buy it through the link below, I get a couple percentage of the purchase price. There's no extra cost to you, but what I'm gonna send to you if you buy it through that link is my complete Visual Composer course for free because basically I'm being paid by the Visual Composer instead of paid by you. So I'm gonna give you that course for free. All you have to do is send me the receipt after you purchase Visual Composer, and I will get you access to that course. If you have a theme that has Visual Composer, so you don't actually buy the plugin, you won't have access to the template library and a couple other features, but I will give you a heavy discount for the Visual Composer course if you have a theme that has Visual Composer. So if that's the case, just send me an email at bjorn at wplearninglab.com. Say you have such and such a theme with Visual Composer and I will send you the discount information. So the next step is go ahead, click below, buy Visual Composer, send me the receipt, learn all about it in my complete course and start building awesome stuff with Visual Composer. So that's how easy it is to create a slider or a carousel, whatever you wanna call it, with Visual Composer. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below the video. If you haven't done so yet, hit subscribe, then hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. And next up is clicking one of these videos on the right hand side to learn even more about WordPress or just keep cruising on this playlist and learn all about Visual Composer. Until next time, keep crushing with WordPress and I will see you in the next video.